you know, uh, I've been I've been crying. I don't know for how many months now. And those of you from Kaduna State, when I came to your state in uh, the beginning of uh, July, you will know the way I spoke to you in Kaduna City. Kaduna, are you here? Kaduna City, where are you? Can you raise up your hand? You will know that. Thank you. The way I spoke to you, you will know that I've been crying for some months. And when I came to Zaria in July, you will know the way I spoke to you in Zaria that the word of God. I want to go back to the word of God. You'll know that, uh, you know, the person standing before you now has been, you know, has been drinking his tears. And uh, I don't want you to, I mean, I should stop crying. Should I cry till I die? And you know, when you as a leader, and I knew the vision God gave me at the beginning of this deeper life, the teaching, the holiness, the lifestyle, the humility, the meekness, the lowliness. You know, I, I have the picture. I know, how the, I know what the Lord showed me. I saw it those years. And I spoke about it. And we started laying the foundation. But I see things, uh, you know, going another direction. About our dressing. Let's cover our nakedness. The men will cover their nakedness. The women will cover their nakedness. And let's dress um, moderately too. Moderately too. You see how I've come before you tonight. Uh, you know, I go to the States uh, in Nigeria here a few times at least. And when I see the uh, pastors of deeper life there, even when it is very, very hot, I see them tie, suit, shoe, every time. And uh, not only that, I see them changing suit after suit. And I, I look at them, and I wonder. And sometimes when I call them to meetings in Lagos, uh, I had meetings with all the states in Lagos in August, with all the district pastors. They come from, you know, their states and all suit. And it appears that, you know, the tailors are only busy for them in their states. Looks like the tailors have no other job to do now except to be, you know, dressing the men and the women of deeper lives. And I just wonder, and I think you should be wondering too, why can't we be moderate in our dressing? It is not the suit that gives the anointing. A lot of people have lost spiritual power. All that remains is a coat and tie. And I see some of you women too, you are you too, you have started putting on something like coat. I see you. Only it's, um, you know, it's not every time I can talk. Even sometimes when I want to talk, my heart is, you know, so crushed and bruised that the only thing I can do is to run away and go and hide myself in my closet and talk to God. I see some tendencies. I see some competition with the people of the world. And I see this kind of, uh, you know, high class dressing that is coming into the midst of the people. The pastors are like that. The women are like that. Let's dress moderately. That's how we know those who really love the Lord. The people who are preparing for the coming of the Lord. Don't spend all the money that we need to spend for evangelism and for the work of the Lord. Don't spend it all on dressing. And then the way you clothe your children, teach them Christian standard from their childhood. Don't spend all the money on clothing them. Let things be moderate. 
you know in the uh, early in the early life my own early life before I became born again there's something I used to see in the various denominational churches that made me to feel disgusted I wasn't even born again then the people that came to a church they came to advertise their kind of dressing. Have you seen that in denominations before? Oh, it's there. And eventually I started, I, I began hearing the gospel message. And I, 1964, the 5th of April, quarter after 8 in the evening, I knelt down and the Lord just broke my heart. And I gave my life to the Lord, I became born again. I didn't know too much that time, but I told the Lord that, Lord, the rest of my life, I will read this Bible, I will serve you. And I was in that church, and um, oh, in the early years, they taught the word in that church. Eventually, in all the camp meetings of that church, I discovered in the early years of my Christian experience in the church, whenever we were going for camp meeting, oh, we were preparing, really preparing, because we knew it will have spiritual impact. Later, whenever we got to the camp meeting, it will be fashion parade. And I saw it. And um, deeper life had not even started then. And it's that time I'd been crying in that place. And I saw the general overseer of that church. He's gone now. He's dead now. He died in 1983. But I saw him. And uh, he... Because uh, he knew I was a graduate, I'd been, uh, you know, I was even lecturing, uh, you know, I lectured later. But before I came to lecture, he had known me. He looked at the way I dressed and he said, uh, look at this, look at how you are dressing. I said, sir, when I became a Christian, I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The way I'm dressing now, that's what we are teaching. That you are changing the standard. And a lot of these people coming to all this, they are changing the standard. I said, sir, the women in this church, when I became born again, they were covering their heads. But now what I see, I'm surprised. And I told him, I didn't know I would leave that church or that they would drive me away, whichever. But I told him, the way I am now, I will never be. Oh, I don't know about you, but look, I became born again in 1964. This is 1990. I'm not ashamed yet of wearing sandals, of wearing my, you know, moderate shirt. I'm not ashamed of not caring about money. When you see a man who can stand on conviction for 25, 26 years, that man is going somewhere. Where are you going if you don't have conviction? If you bring all this, you see all this, uh, you know, fashion of the world, I see it amidst a lot of people in deeper life now. The thing we fought in those other denominations, and, and we fought this thing. I mean, I, I fought it. Scripture union, I fought it. Apostolic faith, I fought it. In all the places they invited me to speak and give the word of God, I fought this thing you call worldliness. The things that I almost gave my head and neck for in my own house here. Look at it. What's the matter with you people? This time, let's come back to where deeper life ought to be. And while we're here, 
let us demonstrate that in reality, we are willing to go back to a kind of dressing that is moderate enough that people will be able to know that is deeper life. Now we don't know the difference between assemblies of God and deeper life, between apostolic faith and deeper life, between first core and deeper life. We used to know in those days, immediately you see somebody coming, a lady coming, far at a distance, you have no doubt that's deeper life. Anywhere. Am I right? We don't know them now. Immediately you see a man in a church, before we started Sunday worship, that uh, you know, a man will rise up and say, I want to ask a question. Immediately the pastor there will say, are you one of those Bible study people in deeper life? They know they knew us. Why are you changing like chameleons? Why can't you stand? Paul the Apostle said, follow me as I follow Christ. What evil have I done that you cannot follow me? Am I not an encouragement to you? Or am I going to be the only one that is keeping the standard? The only one that is crying and praying and saying, God, take us back to the old standard. Am I the only one going to get to heaven? I don't have money in my pocket. I don't have money in my wardrobe. There's no money anywhere. There's no other thing except just preaching this gospel to you. I do it in the day and in the night. Am I not a challenge to you? Why can't you follow my example? If Paul told those Corinthian Christians and said, follow me as I follow Christ, or am I not following Christ at you all? Know? If you can convince me of sin, come and tell me. If you feel that I am not doing the right thing, and you know, I'm just a heretic, a centric fellow, that will not, uh, you know, go into all the things of this world. If that is what you think and that is why you cannot follow my example, come and tell me. Let me know if I'm going astray. How can somebody have children and those children cannot follow their father? Let's repent. And I believe you will repent. I know you love me. But you know I'm not... I think you love me, but I only think about it. But how can I be convinced? I have no other place. I've been rejected by everybody just because of you. Why it not because of you? I would not be driven away from where I was before. Oh, they love me in that place. I will tell you I was in the apostolic faith. Some of you young babies in deeper life may not know that. And I, in that church, oh, they all knew me. And the general of Asir, he took me like his boy. But because of my conviction, I said, no, I cannot. If you change a little thing in that Bible, I cannot agree with you. And it's because of you. You know, I could. I could have remained there and, you know, got to heaven straight ahead because I will never commit sin. But because of you, that time you were still in the wilderness of sin. You didn't know what they call Christianity. You were still in the denominational wilderness. But I said, those people, this vision of deeper life that I've seen, uh, let, me, let me stand true to it. It's because I came out and I started standing. That's how you came. Why don't you show your gratitude and keep this standard? I hope we are going to keep the standard.